pineapples and apples. So I actually, we need about over 500 of each image set. So after a while I was like, screw it. I already have like um, over 500 pictures of roses and tulips. They yeah, the flower as well um, in my computer. So we'll just use that. Okay, here we go. So first, we're gonna create a directory. Where are you? My projects. We're gonna create a new folder. Can you see it? No, all right, let's make this big. Hala, it disappeared. What the heck? Projects. There. Whoa. Projects. There. What the? Okay. Um, we're gonna make a new folder, and we're going to call it TensorFlow Demo. And then we're gonna put one folder in it called Categories. And then inside, we're going to put rows, and then another one, tulips. And we're going to put images. We call this training data. So we're going to feed TensorFlow, a library for machine learning, images of roses and images of tulips. And then after it's trained already, we're going to test it. We're not going to combine roses and tulips, okay? <laughs> We're going to test it, and we're going to give it a picture of a rose from somewhere in the internet, and let's see if it can predict that it's actually a rose. It can tell. Okay. So I'm going to look for my, my... I have a previous directory here called test, which has roses. Oh, there you go. So let me see. Okay, that's one rose, another rose. That's not a rose. But that's, that's a rose as well. Okay, those are what they call um, errors in our training data, which is normal when you're training, right? Sometimes you have once in a while you have something wrong, but you have to make your data as clean as possible. We'll not delete it for now, but let's copy all those roses, and then that's 642 roses, boom. Okay, we have the roses, ladies and gentlemen. We have the roses. Now is the tulips. We really moved it, huh? Tulips. Copy all the tulips we have. Wait, before we copy it, let's show it first. Tulips. Ah, oh, there are tulips, 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 tulips. With a weird meal. <laughs> tulips. Because there's tulips in the foreground. All right? So, we're, and imagine the, the data that we're given, even like tulips that are shredded and put in a table. So, all kinds of tulips, and we're going to copy that. That's... 800 tulips, put that in that folder, boom. Okay, so we have now rows and tulips as a category. And then, so categories, and we're gonna run this command from TensorFlow. So I'm gonna run this command, I'm gonna let it run, and then I'm gonna explain what's happening. And the reason for this is because training takes time, all right? So here we go. So the command is somewhere here, and I'm gonna copy paste it. Yeah. We're going to go to our TensorFlow demo. So we have the categories. All right. But before that, we're going to add a TensorFlow library, another library, but a, a model called Inception. I'm going to explain also a little bit in a little bit, but for now, let's just copy it. So where is my test library? Inception, copy you, bring you to. TensorFlow demo. Copy it here. We're pasting it. It's pasted. Now time for the command. We go here. We paste it. Yes, I want to paste six lines. Python, da -da 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 -da. we're going to retrain. Okay. Boom. Okay. Oh. Oh. What's happening? Run out of memory. And we are on. Okay, let's give a big round of applause for this one. What in the world is happening? So for those, what in the world is happening? This is what's happening. We are taking the Inception library from TensorFlow. So TensorFlow is an open source software library for machine intelligence or machine learning. It allows us 
to not do machine learning at very basic, but like in a high level. So we're taking images, putting in TensorFlow, and then we're gonna output a prediction, a prediction model. Now, this model, if we started from scratch, we would take forever, like on my computer, maybe like three weeks, four weeks to train this properly. However, the guys at Google are so nice. We have what they call the Inception Library. So the Inception Library, what is the Inception Library? You know what, let's change the music to something more appropriate. Inception theme. <laughs> Do I have internet? Oh, it's so slow. I will play my local one for backup music. There you go. I have Inception. There. Do you remember? Inception. In TensorFlow. You see, ImageNet is a common academic data set in machine learning for training an image recognition system. Code in this directory demonstrates how to use TensorFlow to train and evaluate type of convolutional, co convolutional neural network. I don't understand what that means, but you can Google it. In particular, we demonstrate how to train the Inception V3 architecture as specified in this paper by some really smart guys. <laughs> this is how Inception looks like. Yellow, yellow, green, yellow, yellow, green. Yellow, 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 blue, yellow, red. What are these? This is what it is. Zoom in. This stands for convolution, something we do not understand. AVG pool or average pool, something we still do not understand. Max pool. Mm -hmm. Concat, dropout, fully connected, and soft max. Really, really machine learning jargons. Makes my nose bleed. But don't worry, the guys at Google already assembled it in such a way that we can use right away. So convolution against convolution, and then there's like convolution, neural, whatever, and then a concatenation. Ah, you combine this convolution pool with a concat, like combine, right, to this other convolution pool. Concat is like a dream within 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 a really complex dream. Woo! Did you take the red pill? That's at the very end. So I I looked this up and I studied it. And what it actually means in more layman's term is that this section over here tries to understand the textures of, a, of like an image. Is this rough or is it smooth? This one looks at the edges. Is there an edge there or is it like a gradient? This one, is it color green or color yellow or color blue? This one, relax. This one, is it a face? Or before we get a face, it's like, are, is this an eye? Is this an eyebrow? And then you combine it to make it a face. I, I'm just substituting. But what it is is that each section tries to identify parts of the image so when it is towards the end it combines the features and makes sense of it all and my time is up are you serious we're just getting started let me check how is our training our training is already at step 650 out of 4000 don't worry we will get there by the way i am using a gpu version so it should be faster than normal it took me a really long time to set this up. It almost broke my OS. My computer, I mean. We're already at 930, 940 and counting. Don't worry, we're getting there. No, I have 15 more minutes. It's 3 to 3.45, but thank you very much for your reminder. All right. So that is the Inception Library. That is what is what we're leveraging so that we don't have to build it ourselves. Enough inception. Let's go back to Kaigo. Oh my gosh, so many things at the same time. Oh my gosh, where's that coming from? That's where you stop, right? Quick! Oh my gosh. 
somebody else playing with me? <laughs> iTunes, are you playing iTunes? Ah, I know not. I press this one. There. Whew! Let's do Kaigo again. All right. So, going back to the to the to our training, we're already stopped almost step two thousand. We're close, guys. We're halfway there. Hang on, okay? So, what we're going to do is we're going to look at another thing called playground.tensorflow.org, and hopefully, my interest there. All right. Can you see it? Okay. So, what we have here is actually imagine this is. You're a classifier. We're classifying here. We're trying to classify yellow or orange, which you see as yellow, and blue. So we're trying to create a model or a set of parameters that the computer will learn on its own to classify. So let's press play. Oh, yeah! Round of applause for machine. Very good, very good machine. All right, let's let's increase the hardness or the difficulty up round two like that can it create a model let's play can it can it oh piece of cake round of applause again for machine oh my gosh machine how about this i think it's gonna be a piece of cake right let's play it ah oh my gosh how was that even let's see about this let's play all right, you can do it, machine. You can do it. It's not able to figure it out. It's like it's close, but not quite. Nope, it's not getting there. So, the reason why it's not able to get there is because it only has few neurons. So, sometimes when you have few neurons, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> you don't get things right away. So take care of your, your neurons, okay? All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna add more neurons to our TensorFlow. So we're adding six neurons, eight neurons, and then we're gonna add hidden layers. So hidden layers are like neurons that are hidden. Or in other words, they're like on top of each other. So in the inception model, these are like hidden net neural networks because they're like inside. So we're gonna add more here. We're gonna add more. All right, it's a very complex experience. We're, not, we're just gonna click these features. I don't really know what this does, but let's just click it. It's now the super powerful brain. Shall we give it a try? Are you guys gonna like it? Shall we give it a try? All right, let's run it. All right. It's struggling. Whoa! 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 It can't make up its mind. And it got it! Run of applause! Woo! After a hundred something iterations, our model was able to finally, our, we were able to create a model to able to predict the blue section against the orange section. However, it's not so easy to just, you know, blue and yellow is just dots, it's 2D. Too, it's too um, in the images, we have like, like pixels and millions of combinations. So let's see how a TensorFlow is doing in the background. <gasps> we are done. Are you guys ready to put it to the test? All right, so this is how we put it to the test. By the way, I didn't explain the eye. Pala, ano, what this star did. So, we actually called the TensorFlow library and then we called a retrain script. So the retrain script just actually takes the inception library, takes out the last layer of the inception library, and then retrains that last layer. So it doesn't retrain the whole neural network, all right? It only retrains the last one layer, or else it will take us weeks. So it might, instead of a matter of weeks, since we're only retraining the last layer, because all the layers already have good parameters, then it will only take a short amount of time. So we are able to retrain, and we're retraining it to give us two types of output, only roses and only tulips. All right, the bottleneck directory is basically the directory where it's just like a temporary directory where all the, 
all the the data that is so each image is passed to the whole inception library to get the parameters to configure like to get the initial set of parameters for each image and then it's stored here for each image and then this is what um, the retrain script uses to finally add that last layer for inception and then inception is the model directory for you know the inception library the output graph is this model so remember that model that can predict it's this file, so retrain graph.pb. If you look at it, it's actually 87.4 megabytes. That's the configuration of the brain of our neural network or our trained model. And finally, retrain labels at txt is just it's just the contents, rows and tulips. And finally, the image directory is categories, which is our source. All right. Now, let us tra uh, retrain this. I mean, let's predict. So let's call that label image that ty. I have here a label that image ty. I'm gonna copy it, and I'm oh wait, I'm gonna copy it. I'm gonna put it as a flow demo, paste it there, all right, and let's use it. Okay, can you see that? So we type Python label image that ty, and we're gonna give it an image. We don't have an image yet. Let's find an image of a rose in the internet. Rose. I want to get a picture of Rose and Jack, no? Rose. Okay. Which one? Which one? Say stop. Okay, stop. This one. All right. So let's take a screenshot of this. Screenshot. Not that I download it. I'm just going to take a screenshot. You heard that? That was the computer. Again, again, again. Uh, all right. So now it's here. What is it called? It's in my desktop. It's called screenshot something something. Let's change it to random flower. Random flower. Okay. Um, it's in desktop. Random flower.png. Enter. Trying to execute, trying to execute. And there's an error. <laughs> we need to debug. Invalid argument error. Invalid JPEG data. Oh, it can only get JPEG. So. We have to change this to JPEG. Let's put some music in here. Okay, so what you can do is open it, file, export. Yeah, PNG, JPEG, random flower, save. Where did I say that? Again, file, export, pictures, save. Ah, ah, I already said that a while ago. All right, so flag, close preview. All right, um, it's in pictures. Randomflower.jpg. Yeah. And it's. It's a roast 99%. Round of applause to the machine. Now let's give it tulips. Tulips, 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 tulips. Let's see. Images at Google. Tulips. Whoops. Not that. Yeah. Tulips. Say stop again. Wow, it looks like you have this one. Wow, that's a lot of tulips. Let's take a screenshot. Let's take a screenshot. Uh, I have to do the thing again. Where are you? There you are. Open and preview file, export as JPEG. Yeah, this is a car. That JPEG. Let's try to pull the computer. All right, let's do this. Python label image pictures. This is a car. That JPEG. Enter. All right, all right, all right. Come on. And we have tulips, ninety-nine percent. Wow, I don't know, if you're not impressed about that, I mean, like, I know why you're not impressed, you're thinking, oh my gosh, I don't have a job anymore. <laughs> Programming is about to be learned by computers. They won't have jobs anymore. Woohoo! <laughs> Actually, I studied TensorFlow for a couple of uh, months already, and I'll tell you the good news. It's hard. <laughs> we will still have jobs. But 
only if you can stay relevant. You see, today in this day and age, before, you know, it was difficult to make a website. And it was really, really cool if you knew how to make an app. But now, like tools like Firebase, with tools like, you know, like there's even like free websites builders out there. There's even like an AI website builder. It's so easy right, to make a website. So developers are like, oh gosh, our jobs are just like, bye bye. Yep. But the good news is, machine learning is still hard. <laughs> so you will still have jobs. Actually, if I thought about it, you know. Remember, uh, eight years ago, I typed in Google, how to make a website. I spent four months studying it, and I finally was able to do it. Today, we don't have to go with that anymore. The new version of how to make a website today is already how to do machine learning. So that's when you go home, that's the first thing you should type on Google. Because how to manipulate this and how to control and how to program on top of machine learning and AI is going to be, it actually is already the next thing. It's already what's being used internally in a lot of companies and it's already going mainstream. And so as developers, the next thing that we need to do is self-study the cutting edge or the next edge of technologies. And this is definitely the next edge. So if you're not yet studying machine learning, definitely go do one. So it's, it's not too hard. Um, I know it said it's hard, but it's not that hard if you have the drive and the will to succeed. Yeah. You know, um, you can go just Google TensorFlow for poets. It's a code lab, and I spent like maybe like um, 40 minutes or 50 minutes on it, and I was able to get like uh, a good grasp of how TensorFlow works in the high level. And then you go deep dive and like you know run into all the errors, and then you copy paste the error into Google. And then you realize that you're the first person to encounter that error because that error is not yet on Stack Overflow. And you have an opportunity to ask that question in Stack Overflow and you see the upvotes go up. Isn't that amazing? You became from a, you started as a person who didn't even input anything to Stack Overflow to now being the person who asks the questions. So cool. I still remember when I started, I was the first person to ask the question, how do you concatenate two strings in JavaScript? <laughs> I have like 90 upvotes on that thing. That was like so many years ago. You cannot like ask those questions anymore. They're like already filled up. But TensorFlow questions, man. You're like the first question, you're like the first person to ask them, like they, days before anybody even answers. In fact, you probably even already solved the, the, the problem and then you answer your own question. Double cool. <laughs> All right, so let's give one more try to our, to our um, machine learning here. Let's give it a hard one. So it's like, two, um, it's like rows, black and white. Blah, blah, blah. Ah, no. Let's give it a drawing. Like kids drawing. Rows, kids drawing. <laughs> Yeah, I just take the microphone. <laughs> All right, let's copy paste that thing. Let's screenshot this thing. There you go. Let's see if we can tell it. Let's open that. Let's open this. And while we're at it, let's give it some sound effects. You see. <laughs> Sir, we're about to put this flower into the system. Let's see if it can predict it. That really looks weird, sir. Yep. Let's see if it's able to be predicted. Export this JPEG. We're doing it right now. JPEG. Guess what I am. Say Come on. Guess what I am. Um, JPEG. Python. Label. Um, pictures. Where's my tilde? There. Pictures. Guess what I am. Rose! We were able to get snake, Kaigo! Woo! Happy Kaigo again.
Give a round of applause to TensorFlow, guys. I hope you give it a try. Woo! Questions? Do we have questions? Oh, we have a guy over there. It's 347, so I'm really out of time. Thank you so much. So we'll take questions. I just, I just played a hot one and then I'm an instant DJ. All right, let's hear the question. What's your name, sir? Uh, bench. Bench. Like the store? Uh, yes. Wow, like benchmark. <laughs> okay, uh, sorry. What's your question? Bench. So, uh, is it possible to use in? Uh, is it possible? I mean, the tensor probe to be used in stock market prediction. Oh. And, uh, or was it limited to images only? What? Limited to? Images. Images. No, 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 no. It's totally, um, there's even like something called SyntaxNet. Um, so SyntaxNet, um, TensorFlow, is a library for TensorFlow, or it's like a similar thing for, in the second exception is for images. SyntaxNet is for sentences and understanding words and like comprehend, like natural language processing. So that's like, for text. And then you can also configure TensorFlow to work for um, what you said, like stock market predictions. You just have to like program it in such a way. Yeah, it's going to make some money. But you know what, to be honest, there's already a lot of machine learning AI already operating at the stock market, so it's going to be like the battle of the AIs. Uh, next question. Next question, please. There's a guy right over here. Okay. What's your name, sir? Joseph. Joseph. What's your question? It's, uh, as you all know, TensorFlow is, uh, is a really powerful, but what, when... Uh, what did you say, as we all know? It's like it's really powerful, uh, but... Oh, we all know it's powerful. Yes, we know that. But then, what, where will we draw the line between using TensorFlow or using the common machine learning algorithms like tree classifier or theme? Yeah, that's, after, uh, that's a good question, but that's a similar question to what I would say, like, what would I use, like, for my PHP library, like, Cake PHP, Coding Nighter, Laravel, there are many other different, like, uh, frameworks, libraries out there for machine learning, um, and they have their pros and their cons. To be honest, I haven't checked out everything, and so you can either spend a lot of time reading the reviews on, like, machine learning forums and try to figure out which one is best, but to be honest, I would rather recommend that you just dive into one right away, whether it's TensorFlow or whether it's, I forgot the other names. It's like at the tip of my brain, not trained enough. Um, but there are others. But whatever it is, pick one and dive into it right away because you will need to learn a lot of concepts in machine learning that's not um, the same as traditional programming. Because um, you're trying to program now a machine that learns. You're not trying to program how it will learn. It's, you're just trying to program the parameters. So it's a different mindset. So it's best that you get into it as soon as possible, regardless of the framework. So Albert, we have one last question over here. All right, you are the lucky guy. Hello, Sir Joseph. Uh, my question is, uh, how will the code look like if we use TensorFlow to figure out this bug? to figure out fizz Are you familiar with fizz Yes, that's like something I left behind in college. <laughs> How do you do fizz buzz again? Fizz uh, buzz, fizz, we, fizz buzz. Yeah. It's like the, I think in schools they should change it to pen, pineapple, pen, pineapple, <laughs> apple, pen. It would be more fun. I actually don't know. Um, there, is a, there is a TensorFlow um, code samples that work for Hello World, there might be for FizzBuzz. Let me start. FizzBuzz TensorFlow. FizzBuzz in terms of the internet is an amazing thing. All right, sir, the answer to your question is in Google. <laughs> All right, guys, thank you so much. Remember, it used to be how to make a website. Now, it is how to do...
All right, thank you guys so much. All right, thank you so much, Mr. Albert. What a great way to end the series of talk that we.